When I was planning my trip to Sicily, I found it quite difficult to find all the information I needed to really understand the area. All information I found was kind of scattered everywhere in different websites and it took me a long time and a lot of research to be able to plan the trip. But after all the research I did and spending a few weeks traveling in Sicily, I decided to come up with this complete travel guide to facilitate your life so you don't have to go through the headache that I went through while planning the trip. Sicily is an island situated at the very bottom of Italy. It's the largest island in the region and it has a little bit of everything. A big city life, historical towns, nature reserves, archaeological sites and lots of beautiful beaches that kind of feel like you were transported to the tropics for a little bit. And the food is amazing. Oh my god, we had so much good food. Especially because many of the vegetables and the fruits from that region, they grow in the volcanic soil. So even just simple things like a simple tomato would taste like the best tomato you've ever had in your life. Sicily is an island that has influence from the Greeks, the Romans, the Arabs and other different ethnic groups. So you will see a lot of those influences in the food, but also on the architecture, the arts, and everywhere through the island. If you're traveling internationally, you will probably arrive in one of the main airports of the region, either the Catania Airport or the Palermo Airport. Uh, and there are many affordable direct flights from uh, most of the major airports in Europe. When I was researching flights, I realized that the flights to Catania or the flights to Palermo were more or less the same price. So we ended up just choosing an airport based on the locations that we wanted to visit. But we'll get into those locations in a minute. If you're coming from another part of Italy, there is also ways to arrive in Sicily by ferry, by car or by train. If you're traveling by car, the easiest way is to drive through Villa San Giovanni or or Reggio Calabria where you can take the ferry to Messina. If you prefer to go by ferry you can take it from the major ports in Italy. If you prefer to arrive in Sicily by train there is also different options coming from Rome, Milan, Genova, Naples and other parts of Italy as well. The times and the price will depend on uh, the period you're going or the location you're going. The train companies that go to Sicily are Train Italia and Italo. So I'll leave the link of these two companies in the description of this video so you can check the prices and see what works best for you. Usually when you arrive at the airport you can either take a taxi to your hotel or you can take a bus and the buses are very convenient, they are cheap and they are very easy to find as well. As soon as you get out of the, the airport uh, all the bus stops are right there in front of you. Once you arrive in Sicily you will definitely not want to spend your entire trip in just one location. Sicily has so many different beautiful locations for you to visit and the best way to get around is either by car or by bus. If you have a driver's license, which is not my case, there's plenty of rental services both in Palermo and Catania so you can rent a car for as long as you need. If you prefer moving around the island by public transport, you have no trouble going through the major areas. I personally travel through the islands by public transport and it was fine. As long as you know in advance exactly where the bus stops are, and what time they leave, you have no trouble. So I recommend checking that information or if you cannot find information about the place where you are going, you can also just email and contact the hotel or Airbnb where you are staying because usually they know everything about the public system, the public transport system in the region. But bear in mind that certain locations are quite difficult to get and you can only access them by car or by taxi. We went to a fisherman village in the south of the island and there was no public transport to that village. So to access this village we ended up taking a taxi. Uh, it costs us around 50 euros more or less each way but if you're not planning on going to any sort of remote village or remote nature reserve you can just get around by public transport. If you want to check the bus connections in Sicily and you want to find more information I'm also gonna leave all the links of the bus companies in the region below in the description box. And what is the best time to visit Sicily? Well the weather in Sicily will vary depending on which part of the island you are. Some parts are more in the mountains so the weather tends to be a little cooler there. So I would recommend checking online so you know exactly what to pack for your trip. But what I can guarantee you is that during the summer months the weather is always very hot. This summer when we were there the weather was up to 43 degrees Celsius. 
insane. So if you're looking for hot temperatures, I would recommend going during the summer. But if you're looking for a little bit of a mild temperature, I would recommend going between April and June or between the months of uh, September and October. These are also good months to go because uh, during the months of August, there is also mass tourism from different parts of Europe and from different parts of the world as well. So if you want to avoid the tourist crowds, I think these months between uh, April and June and between September and October are the best. But I would say that Sicily is actually one of those places that are just great to visit any time of the year. Many Europeans like to go to Sicily during winter as well to escape the cold winter of the north. And we went there during the summer, during high season, and we just had an amazing time. So Sicily is a very big island and it will take you months to explore everything. So if you don't have months to explore the islands, you have to make some decisions. At first I found it very hard to make decisions on where to go because to be honest, I just wanted to visit everything and there are so many options of places to go but if you only have a couple of days or a couple of weeks I would recommend one of the two options the option one would be visiting the main highlights of the island and an option two would be to stick to one side of the island either the east or the west I would highly recommend you to stick to either the east or the west of the island because then you can really dive into that region and you can really explore the different sides of it. When you plan a visit to the main highlights of the island, you kind of spend a lot of time commuting from one region to another region. And as I said, the island is quite big, so you spend a lot of time commuting. When you stick to either one or the other side of the island, the distances are not so big, so you can really have a good sense of the lifestyle of that region. That's the decision I made during the trip, and it was hard to make this decision, but to be honest, it was the best decision ever. We actually ended up seeing a lot on the east side of the island, and then in the future if I ever go back to Sicily again I can explore the West and have a completely new experience so I don't have to go through the cities and sites that I've already seen before but of course that's a matter of preference if you ask me I would choose either the East or the West but you know each person is different each person has their own needs so you make the decision based on what works best for you if you choose the first option and you decide to visit all the main highlights these are the 10 places i would recommend you having a look into and by the way i did a lot of research to come up with this guide so you can have a good experience during your trip so if you can leave a like in this video i would really appreciate that so the 10 places i would recommend you having a look into are tower mina which is a beautiful resort town on the top of a hill full of historical sites, culture, some amazing views and easy access to the beach. The whole town is very aesthetically pleasing and it has a certain luxury feel to it. It kind of reminded me a little bit of the island of Capri. Ortigia Island in Siracusa. Ortigia is an island inside of Siracusa and inside of the island is exactly where you want to stay. This area was one of the most important Greek cities back in the day and the whole atmosphere is just very chilled. Plus, it has some of the best food we had in the entire trip. Palermo. If you want more of a busy city life, Palermo is the capital of the island with over 1 million inhabitants. In Palermo, you will want to visit the open street markets, the many churches, the squares, the bars, and the restaurants. Valley of the Temples. The Valley of the Temples is an archaeological site dotted with a variety of ancient temples. This one is a little out of the way from the main cities, but if you're traveling to Sicily with the intention of exploring ancient history, this place is a must visit. Mount Etna. The Mount Etna is the biggest active volcano in the whole of Europe. While we were visiting the nearby city of Catania, we found volcanic ashes all over the city because the volcano had just erupted a few days before we arrived. So I will check in advance if the volcano will be active or not on the day of your visit. Val di Noto. The Val di Noto is a historical area in the mountains where you can visit eight different baroque style towns. If you don't have much time, I would say just pick one or two to visit. We ended up visiting Ragusa and Motka, and if I had to choose just one of them, I would go for Ragusa. But that's of course a matter of personal taste. Cefalu. Although we didn't visit Cefalu during this trip, many consider it to be one of the most beautiful villages of the region. It's not far from Palermo, so it's possible to visit Cefalu for just a day if you're planning to stay there. And they also have a very unique small beach that gets pretty crowded during summer months, but has a very beautiful backdrop with the architecture. San Vitolo Capo. I haven't been to this one yet, but I really want to go the next time you visit Sicily. By the looks of it, it does give you the impression that you're transported to Ipanema Beach in Brazil. And the main reason you would want to go to this area is to do nothing else apart from sunbathing, swimming and relaxing. 
Scala de Turkey. This is a cliff from soft limestone located along the stretch of the sea and it's not far from the valley of the temples. I wanted to visit this area but sadly because of the degradation it has been closed by the authorities. So check in advance if it will be open in case you want to visit it. Matsamemi. Matsamemi is a fisherman's village in the south of the island with a stunning ancient area called Tonara where you can find many high-class restaurants, bars, cafes, this area has been visited by movie directors and Hollywood celebrities like Sarah Jessica Parker for example, which is no surprise to me because this place is so beautiful that it truly feels like you're inside of a movie set. And Sicily has also many interesting nature reserves, beaches and towns, but it's impossible to list all of them in just one video. And as I mentioned, during our trip we ended up sticking to the east part of the island where we visited Catania, Taormina, Siracusa, Ragusa, Modica and Matsamemi. I don't regret making this choice because we saw a little bit of different sides of the island. So in some of the parts we uh, explored more of the beaches and relaxed. In other parts we saw a little more of like architecture and culture. And when you're traveling through Sicily, I would highly recommend you to try the local foods. They have so many amazing dishes. We've had so many different tastes that I have never had before. And I would really recommend you avoiding all of the restaurants that look like tourist traps because usually these tourist trap restaurants are overpriced and the quality of the food is not that great. We ended up going to amazing restaurants without actually spending a lot of money. I really did my research uh, in terms of like what are the foods that you should try there, what are the best places to go. The food culture in Sicily is unique. They have a lot of fresh seafood, great pasta dishes, delicious pastries and very unique snacks. It's like marzipan. Oh. And what is inside? So the outside is marzipan, and what is on the inside? Um, I don't know actually. <laughs> Maybe also? Mm. I like it. It has a little bit of um, vanilla taste, sort of. With little pieces of chocolate. I think that's what is inside, like little pieces of chocolate. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. And if you want to know what are the best sites in the island, which foods you should try and which restaurants you should go to so you can have the best experience, without spending a lot, you don't have to do research because I already did that research for you. And I would recommend you to check out this playlist over here because the tips I give in this video will make your experience in Sicily a thousand times better.